Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for a radio audience here in Mississippi, WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. Also, it's joining us through our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. For our next guest is having a pretty good 2022. We're excited to welcome Brendan Slocum to our program. He's written a fascinating book called The Violin Conspiracy. It's a great novel that has... All the great stuff as music, has a little bit of mayhem, but definitely action and adventure, and even some self-awareness as well. We'll talk to Brendan not only about the writing of the book, but also what it's been like for him to share these characters with the world. Brendan, thank you so much for the time. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey, Brendan, I saw you say in an interview that, I mean, for you, I mean, this this is, is, is something that really has been great for you to be able to experience, music being one of the things you say has saved your life. What has it been like for you, though, to see the way that the violin conspiracy, though, has resonated? with people you know it, it has really been amazing i i set out to write a story that people would enjoy and i that the response has been overwhelming i'm just really glad that people like it and it, there's so many layers to this story brendan when i was reading the violin conspiracy myself i mean as we're kind of meeting the main character ray and being able to kind of get an idea of his own journey there are so many things that kind of i think we can all res- you know we kind of relate to and respond to one him having this amazing gift and his talent, but also, of course, you know, that talent being recognized by other people and seeing how far it could take him. What was that like for you in the middle of of the adventure that he is a big part of? What was that like for you to be able to kind of illustrate? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Um, it uh, showing Ray's progression and you know his his, his journey through from a teenager to an adult in the classical music field. It was a lot of fun to do. Um, I, I like to say that I was living a bit vicariously through him. There's certain things in the book that I actually went through that um, he goes through on the pages. And there are some things that I never got to do that I just lived through Ray. So it was a lot of fun. Well, music is something you've definitely have found success in, Brendan. But is, is writing, being a published author, is that something you always felt for yourself as well? It's one of those things that, you know, you, you, you hope that it'll happen. And it's just, it, you put it in the back of your head. Yeah, I'd like to do that one day. And I, I don't know that I ever really thought that it was going to be attainable. But, hey, yeah, anything can happen, and I'm living proof of that. It, it's fan, it's a fantastic feeling. My face hurts from smiling so much. Wow. And and I think for so many people, uh, Brendan, that has to feel good for them uh, to be able to see that. And I think the other thing about, about Ray, you talked about the connection, and I also uh, saw you talk about this in another interview. There's this one part of, of the book where, of course, Ray is preparing for something big and him being given the assurance, you got this. Talk to us about that for yourself. What has it been like for you to not only to recognize your talent, but for other people to be able to see that talent in you, uh, Brendan, and to it really push you to be able to go for it. it it's a it's a great feeling to, to just be validated. It's a wonderful feeling, you know, because you, you put all the work in. And I can speak for myself in saying, I, I mean, I've worked. I've worked my butt off. I used to practice three and a half hours every day, and I did – I put everything into it, every bit of advice and uh, instruction that my teachers would give me, I, I would do, and I would just do it until I couldn't do it anymore. And it, it, it's the validation that you get from, from going through all of that and, you know, being able to perform and able to play music at a high level. It, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world. And now here you are with this book that people literally around the world are being able to discover and to enjoy. The, the other thing I want to mention, Brendan, that comes up in the book, unfortunately, even with all the talent that Ray has, he still has to deal uh, with people being able to see past his skin. And I love that one passage in the book where he basically talks about, you know, maybe people can get to a place where they can be able to enjoy just the music and look past him and actually see his gift. Talk to us about that, what that was like for you to to be able to connect with, but also to be able to share with the reader about Ray's journey outside of everything else he was dealing with. Yeah, it's it's one of those most it's one of the most important themes in the book, I, I think, um, just because 
you know, Ray is a, is a black man, people automatically see him as less capable, you know, that, that he's he's not able to do this. This is not for him. This that He really shouldn't be doing this. He should try to do something else that he's going to be successful at. And, and all the work that he's put in, none of that seems to matter because all they can see is his skin color until he actually proves himself. And then once he does do that and people start to appreciate it, it's like, okay, I have been validated. This is everything that I've done, all the hard work that I've done. It's it's actually paying off and people are, are listening to me rather than looking at me. And just to be able to get that message out that, you know, things like this do happen. And, and for, for people like me who have, who's actually happened to, and also Ray in the book, um, it, it's one of those, those hurdles that we have to jump over that once we get past it, you know, it's, it's the best feeling in the world because our work is validated. Our worth as well is validated. I mentioned about readers, Brendan, uh, picking up the book. Of course, a lot of people have gotten to know you because it was chosen as part of the Good Morning America book club. Talk to us about that experience. What was it like for you to have your debut novel being recognized on such a grand stage like that? I, I still can't believe it. You know, I, I, I just wanted – to write a good story that people would enjoy. I had no idea it was going to blow up the way that it did. And just that experience when I got the call that it was selected as uh, Good Morning America's February book club pick, I just, I mean, I, I, I don't remember if I did a flip or a cartwheel or if I just kind of <laughs> passed out or whatever, but it was it was phenomenal. And I mean, that is one of the, the greatest days of my life when I found that out. Uh, and not only uh, readers, but one of our mutual friends, Victoria Christopher Murray, wrote a, a, an amazing uh, review of the book. And I remember seeing her post on Facebook, which is how I initially found out about your book, quite honestly with you, Brendan. And I bring that up because you've not only found readers like myself who enjoy your work, but also other authors. What is that experience been like for you to connect with that with that literary community that way? Oh, man. Now, these are people that I have been reading for years. And, you know, to have them, I, I got to sit next to Jeffrey Deaver the other day, you know, who he wrote oh, wow. The Phone Collector, and he did a double, yeah. 007 story. And, you know, I, and I said I was having a fanboy moment. We were doing a conversation. I said, I can't believe I'm sitting here next to Jeffrey Deaver. And then he said, I can't believe I'm sitting here next to Brendan Floco. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Are you serious? Like, is this really happening? Just, I mean, things like that are, are they're happening constantly. And, and it's it's just hard for me to wrap my head around. And, and I'm just, I'm, I'm geeking out so hard. I'm just enjoying every second of this. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, definitely keep enjoying it. Again, everyone, author Brendan Slocum has been our guest. The Violin Conspiracy is out now. Make sure you guys get your your copy no matter where you get your books. Of course, our friends are Amazon.com, but also your local bookstore. And, Brendan, how can our audience stay connected with you? Oh, my website, brendanslocum.com, B-R-E-N-D-A-N-S-L-O-C-U-M-B.com. Uh, my handle on Instagram, Brendan Slocum. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, all of the above, Brendan Slocum. Not to be confused with my nephew, who is Brendan Slocum 22. Looks like me, except with less gray hair. Um, and you can find me there, and you send me a message. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the book. Awesome. Well, Brendan, congratulations to you again. Thank you so much for the time, and we look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you so much. More than welcome. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live here in your community station in Mississippi, at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. So let's go make today amazing. Take care.